Hello everybody, and welcome to my promised solo dungeoneering guide. Uh, this works for mainscapers that are just looking to do solo dungeoneering or ironmen alike. Uh, so let's get right into it. Uh, I'm not going to be covering that much, aside from maybe some of the basics. Um, so here's just what you'll want for a general setup. Um, I'm using a uh, shadow silk hood, I believe it's called with a Celestial Catalytic Staff, that's the Tier 99 Mage Staff. I also have a Tier 99 uh, Mage Top and Tier 90 Mage Bottom, which would ideally be Tier 99. I just keep forgetting to bind it every time I get it. And uh, I bind a Melee Potion, uh, just in case of um, stat reductions that for doors that require a uh, Strength level. Uh, I bind Law Runes for teleporting around and for making Gate Stones. Uh, but after you get the Daemonheim Aura 4, you'll also get Law Runes and Cosmics, so you can always bind, like, ammunition if you decide to change the bind setup a little bit. Um, it may be better to use a Sagittarian Shortbow, the tier 99 uh, ranged weapon, for bosses like Astrea Frostweb, I think she's called. She's in the Frozen Floors, Spawn Spiders, and uh, changes her um, combat style, or, or changes what she protects against. Uh, which means that, you know, sometimes you can't kill her in one rotation with magic. Um, also, my uh, ring is set up so that uh, I have all Blitzer maxed out. Uh, that's really good. You need the hit chance for a lot of the uh, level 130 mobs that you'll encounter for Guardian Doors. And uh, later on, once you get to the Daemonheim Aura 4, the secondary is uh, ideally going to be Blazer. Um, it's much better than Blaster. Blaster is defensive, and you barely need anything defensive, especially if you have Soul Split. Uh, yeah, so you want Bla Blazer just to do more damage and get that freaking bust effect from time to time. And, uh, as I said, always keep in mind, the goal is to maximize your experience gain. Uh, that's always going to be the number one thing whenever you're Dungeoneering, because you really don't want to spend that much time in there, do you? Uh, so here's some tips on efficiency. Uh, after you get your general unlocks taken care of, uh, what you'll want to do is spend your tokens on experience uh, to effectively increase your experience per hour by 10%. Um, I understand if you want to go for like the pets, like Mini Blink or the uh, Frosty, but if you're not going for that and you have all of your other unlocks taken care of, you know, you, you don't have to worry about spending tokens to uh, repair your Chaotix, then just blow it on tokens, get that extra experience. That 10% boost is really nice, uh, especially for how many hours you have to spend going for 120. Uh, and if you've recently began a floor and you encounter one of the following difficult or annoying rooms, say that's the first or second room that you open, uh, skip it. Restart the floor. It's always worth it, in my opinion. Um, and the examples I give are the ferrets, uh, which are these two types of ferrets. You have the hunter one, and you have the colored ferrets. Uh, you can do the fishing one if you want to. Sometimes you can skip it. It's it's totally up to you. But since it's pretty much a guarantee every time, if you know where to throw the fish, then it's not that bad. Uh, then you also have the maze, which can be really annoying if there's a key in the middle and you actually have to solve it. Uh, otherwise, you can just run through the maze really quickly, go to a door, and run straight through it. Uh, you don't actually have to finish the puzzle every time. Then you have the suspicious grooves, which just take a lot of identifying if you don't want to kill yourself on the grooves over and over again. And then the monolith, which just takes an inordinate, inordinate amount of time, especially if you get unlucky, and it always spawns them in pairs of two or something like that. Uh, my last tip on efficiency is to always be sure to use your daily choice of boss to avoid blink on the early warped floors. Uh, so those are going to be, I think, floors 48 to about 52 or 53. Uh, after that point, you start to unlock Hope Devourer, and uh, I can't remember the fifth boss on Warped Floors. Uh, but by that point, you don't really have to worry about encountering Blink, because his chance to spawn continually reduces. Uh, so it's much better to use him on those earlier floors, where he has about a 1 in 3 chance of spawning, as opposed to later on, where it goes up to 1 in 5 or 1 in 6. Uh, now on to my actual methodology for running floors. Um, floors 1 to 30 are a C6 small and one, 31 to 60 are C6 medium. If you're a mainscaper, you may want to change that up and do like the last few floors as a C6 large 
uh, that's all on you. But if you're going to just stick to solo dungeoneering, you can't do larges. And uh, it's not worth the trouble to make a party, the dungeoneering uh, party simulator or whatever it's called from Invention. It's just not worth it. Uh, you may as well just keep doing dungeoneering in the time that you'd be disassembling, and you probably get more experience in the end anyway. Um, so I use gate stones to cover areas that are approximately 3x3 three three in size. That's three rooms by three rooms. Um, so essentially, if you have to travel through two or three rooms to get to the, uh, the next one, the next door to unlock from your previous gate stone, then you should drop a new gate stone at that door. Now, sometimes there are exceptions where if one path only goes directly to one door and every other path you have has like two or three doors at it, uh, then it's totally worth using your two extra gate stones there, leaving your one gate stone wherever it is and traveling through those two or three rooms. But if you'd have to run through two or three doors over and over again to unlock like two or three or four rooms, it's not worth that. The, the time you save is... Uh, really significant. So generally you'll just place gate stones uh, where it's convenient, I guess. Um, if you're running through like small floors though, uh, what I would do is drop gate stones. If you run into one of the annoying or difficult rooms that I showed in the last slide, this is PowerPoint. Um, yeah, so you'll want to drop a gate stone there uh, in hopes of shortening your floor time. Um, you want to put off those uh, rooms as long as possible. So if there's any other room you can open uh, to run, then that's what you'll want to do ideally uh, and leave the really long one for last. Uh, if it means that you have to do the, the room, which you, you generally do have to, uh, you can always go back to it. But sometimes you'll get lucky. I'd say it's about 50-50, maybe 30, 70 or something like that, that you get to avoid the room and getting to avoid the room like 50% of the time, if it takes up like a third of your time in that floor, it's definitely worth it. Um, also, don't bother stat boosting for doors you couldn't open normally. Uh, that means if you're maxed and a door or objective requires you to have more than level 100 in a skill, just just skip it. It's it's a it's an optional room. It's only going to be like one percent bonus XP towards that floor, and unless you're really trying to maximize the amount of XP you get in a prestige, that being the last floor in the prestige, then you just skip it. It's not worth the trouble. Um, and only kill mobs if it's convenient. Uh, that being for adrenaline or food. Uh, getting extra food can be helpful sometimes, especially if you don't have soul split yet. Uh, or necessary, that being for guardian doors, or for food, because food can be necessary for bosses like Blink um, or uh, Calgar. Okay, so now I'm just going to show an example of a C6 small and a C6 medium. Uh, actually, what I think I'll do is I will record them separately, not speed them up or anything like that, post links to that in the description of this video, and uh, yeah. So that's how you do solo dungeoneering. If you want a little more depth or you want to see me actually run floors for examples, uh, you can see those in the description. But I hope this was a decent guide. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you next time.